Pride's Fix is spoiler heavy and full of crude language. I swear like a sailor and Lockheed's no better. <laughs> Consider yourself warned. Hey everyone, it's July 10th and I'm here with this week's Pratt's Picks. As always, we're going to start with Marvel, move into a bit of DC, and round it out with some Image and Dark Horse comics. So let's get started. First up is Uncanny X-Men issue 8. Now this is all the Uncanny X-Men with their Xavier School of the Gifted and it's Magneto and everybody and they're bringing in new mutants. Big deal. I was excited at first. It's kind of losing its steam. It's kind of chugging along right now. I wanted to get into some more action. The only thing happening in this issue basically is Gold Balls Fabio, the kid with the worst power ever, power of lameness, doesn't want to be part of the team anymore. He can't hack it. He might have gold balls, but he doesn't have balls of steel. Right? Right? I'm embarrassed by that one. So Fabio can't hack it, and then there's this big romantic conversation between Magneto and Cyclops about being a mutant and what it means to them, and I was kind of yawning the entire time. It wraps up with a little bit of action. I don't want to ruin it for y'all. I'm starting to like the art a lot, but the one thing I can't get behind is the fact that the Cuckoos, Emma Frost, and Magic all look alike. Like, they all look alike. And I'm like trying to look at the outfits, trying to figure out who's who. Other than that, the writing is totally bendous. There's a lot of cute little quips in there, so it's fun. But nothing really big is happening, and the most intimate part about the whole book was kind of boring. So I would say pick it up, look at it on the shelf, and buy something good. It's not worth your time this week. Moving on to Astonishing X-Men issue 64. Now, last time we read Astonishing X-Men, Bobby Drake was being pimp-ass Iceman with all his ex-girlfriends, losing his fucking shit. Well, this is the issue where you find out why Bobby is losing his shit and what's going on behind all that. He comes in contact with a, an ally that you wouldn't expect. And the book definitely has a very jaw-dropping ending that I do not want to ruin, so check it out. The art. It's not offensive. It's nothing to sneeze at. It's nothing fancy, not offensive. The cover is adorable with mystique on it. So I would say definitely you're going to want to read it on the shelf or wait for the trade because I've never seen Iceman be a bad guy. So I'm kind of liking it, but there might be changes as to what's going on with him after this issue. So wait for the trade, definitely. Let's wrap up this week with Superior Spider-Man issue 13. This is definitely wrapping up the story arc of them being on the raft with all the villains and trapped down there with Joan Jameson. And it's moving the story along. I have become very bored with Superior Spider-Man because it seems like every issue is the same thing. Doc Ock proving he is a Superior Spider-Man and everybody being like, oh wow, that guy's amazing. And it's getting kind of old. The end of this book kind of has Ock taking Spidey in a different direction. And it's a direction that isn't necessarily good, but it's a direction that I feel like everybody sooner rather than later is going to figure out he's not really Spider-Man because he is about to do some shit Spider-Man would never do. And some people are about to figure out that he isn't who they think he is. So pick up issue 13. It was, it was enjoyable. I'd say buy it now. Buy it now. And this ship better start moving along in a different direction because I'm getting kind of bored. Let's move into DC with Justice League issue 22, Trinity War Part 1. Here's my problem with DC. As we all know, I'm not a huge DC fan, but I don't know every DC character. And I'm not going to lie to you and say I know everybody because I don't. But this is a big shit show of the JLA going up against the Justice League and going toe-to-toe, -to -toe and Waller's put together a team that can very much counteract the Justice League. But I don't really know who all those people are. So I'm kind of at a loss as to what's going on. It's very chaotic. 
There is a butt ton of fighting about halfway through and all the way to the end. So if you're wanting action and you're wanting heroes against heroes and you're not sick of that story, this is the book to pick up. Ah, uh, the... Oh, uh, I don't know. The art... Their faces are very anime, but the rest of it's very dirty and grimy. It's pretty. Um, I would say... Oh, I didn't personally enjoy it, but I feel like a DC fan would. So if you're a DC fan, buy it now. If you are not, maybe wait for the trade, because Trinity War sounds like it could be a big deal, and watching heroes go toe-to-toe -to -toe is a good time. Let's jump into Batman issue 22, Zero Year. Now, after Damien's death, Batman's been kind of chugging along, and Scott Snyder definitely has a direction for him, and we're not sure what it is yet. Zero Year is almost the prequel to the DC 52 Batman. It's kind of giving you some backstory on why Batman is the way he is and what's going on with him. So... I picked this book up, Zero Year, I wasn't expecting to like at all. And as I got into it, you have the Red Hood, and you're not sure if he's the Red Hood. You have Penguin, who might not be Penguin. You have Bruce Wayne go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alfred. And it was super intense, and I was jaw on the floor like, what the fuck? This book was exciting, this book was interesting, this book tugged at your heart. It has to be one of the only single issues I've ever read that I felt like a wave of different emotions and I walked, like, shut the book feeling like a winner, feeling like I just read something awesome. I loved this issue. So this is definitely a buy now. It's one of the best single issues I've read in a long time and it has me excited for more Batman. Scott Snyder, thank you. Let's jump away from DC and move into Image Comics with America's Got Powers issue 6 of 7. Now I'm not quite sure if I missed an issue or if these issues are just spaced out so much that I kind of forgot what was going on because it's been a while since I read another America's Got Powers. I am a little bit lost. There is a ton of action going on in the books and with it being a 7 issue series I feel like it's definitely a series to pick up and read before I even get into this. The one beef I have with this book is the fact that there's a lady in there that looks like Sarah Palin. And the president in there looks like Obama. And it pisses me off because we all know this is not fact. This is definitely fiction. This is definitely made up fantastical stuff. Why bring reality into it and ruin it? Give me a random president. Give me some janky ass chick. Don't give me somebody I recognize in real life and try to make me feel like this could really happen because I really don't think it could. It definitely pulls me out of the story personally and I wish they had just done some random old obligatory president guy and just left it at that or left out the president altogether. But other than that, the art is amazing, the writing is amazing, and the book is moving along at a quick, quick pace. A lot of shit hits the fan here, and characters you think might be dead aren't dead. I don't want to ruin it for those of you that are reading it, but buy issue six because seven is the end, and you definitely want to know what's going on. I would say wait for the train. Okay, so we are moving on to The Walking Dead issue 112, and I've been raging for 12 issues that if something doesn't fucking happen, I'm quitting this book for life. This has to be the most exciting an anticlimactic issue I've had so far since 100 because I really feel like something awesome is about to happen. I feel like this action is like climaxing. It's like this great, great comic book orgasm and then it's... I lost it. That's how I felt during this book. I was like, oh my god, this is good. Oh my god, this is good. Oh my god, this is good. What am I having for lunch tomorrow? That's what I felt like. Uh, shit gets real with the governor. Rick finally grows a pair of balls and says something and does something. But Kirkman has a way of toying with you. You From page to page, you think you know where this is going, and you flip a page and you're like, what the fuck? This has that what the fuck moment that I haven't felt since, I don't know, issue 100 and even 20 issues before that. So I would say buy it now, but I feel like the next issue is when shit's really gonna get real, and it better. Get it. Love it. It's The Walking Dead, and it finally feels like the original Walking Dead and not this janky-ass, trugging-along, bullshit Walking Dead that I have been reading. 
We are going to wrap up this week with Dark Horse Comics, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Part 3 of the Core, Season 9, Issue 23. Okay, so Dawn is fading away, and everybody's trying to fucking save her. And little by little, they're like, I can't even remember what's her name's name. And you, at this point, I really don't give a shit. Just let her fucking fade into existence. I can have Xander back to myself. I don't need to watch their little kid romance going on. Makes me sick. She's not really doing too much for the story anyway. Her and Xander are off the side living like this happy little family lifestyle and trying to stay out of the way. So fucking kill Dawn. I don't care. The only thing about this book that was its saving moment for me was when Spike puts Xander on the phone with Dawn as she's fading and he's talking and they don't really remember each other but they feel like they should have this connection. The moment that they had talking to each other when they didn't even say too much reminded me a lot of when Fred dies in Wesley's arms in the series and becomes Illyria. And it, it did tug at that little heartstring because that has to be one of the most heartbreaking moments of Angel, watching Angel when I was a kid. And I felt a little bit, like a minute bit of that in this book. So if you want a little bit of emotion and you want Buffy finally starting to be about kicking ass and maybe magic coming back, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Pick up the book, read it on the shelf, wait for the trade. Because I feel like reading Buffy issue to issue isn't enough. I feel like a whole trade is like an entire episode. And I feel like that's the way Buffy's supposed to be given to me. And that's the way I should be dealing with Buffy. And little, like, 10-minute commercial break Buffy is not working here. So wait for the trade, read it all at once, and experience it like a episode of Buffy with me. And I just want to let y'all know I will not be doing a comic book review next week because I will be going to San Diego Comic-Con. What? I have two costumes planned, one of which is a revamped Kitty Pride, and another one is a super secret costume of mine. But she is somebody that you all will know and recognize and love. And, oh my god, I'm so excited to show it to you, but I don't want to ruin the surprise because I feel like it's going to be really amazing. So, I will give you a hint. Uh, she is a DC character, and that is the hint I'm giving you, so deal with it. But you guys know I hate DC, so it's not going to be a super obscure character, but it is going to be a very creative version of this character. So stay tuned. We will try to record a few small clips and videos at Comic-Con, nothing too much. And I will catch you all in two weeks. So, good night, everybody. Mwah!